So now it's time for a new gift to the trading community. Okay, so I want you to take a look at how the market created a run higher last week. We had a run up and then a break lower. When we see that, you understand that this pattern here is if we trade above it, come back down in, that should be what? Treat it as a bullish breaker, right? Not when we're in trend continuation. We're in trend continuation. I want to see the low, high, lower low, and then the next day, if we rally through it, like we do here, so here's Monday's trading. Now we have one, two, three. Isn't that a three drives pattern? And that's a topping pattern, right? No. No, 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 no. What did I say this morning? We're not trying to call tops. So anyone that would have saw this as a three drives pattern here, or three Indians pattern, if you're a reader of Street Smarts books, which is, in my opinion, one of the better books out there. But that's not a three drives pattern. That's not a three Indians pattern. Okay, It is a setup for those individuals that want to use that idea. So one of the things that I codified in my algorithm is if there is a opportunity for the market to continue higher or lower, everything I'm going to show you here, just reverse it. But since I'm bullish and I told everybody I was bullish, I was looking for a drop in. Drop in the what? We'll get to that. That price level up there, 16,028.75. Absolutely random. No. If you look at the price range from the low to the high, this is a breaker. But there's something specific about this breaker that we have to know and then use it slightly different. Low, high, lower low. This stops out longs. So longs are now no longer allowed to be participants of the next energetic price leg higher. I am not requiring price to trade in a normal sense with the breaker. I want to look for something different. This low up to this high, that is the standard measurement for projection on targets. So if this was a classic breaker, you would use the low to the high. And the lower low that goes below this low here, that sets the tone for the pattern as a breaker. But for swing projections, for targeting purposes, all we're doing is taking the low to the high, one standard deviation. That's what we're looking for. 16,028.75. I think it went one handle above it. Is that is that precise enough for you? We're going to go a little bit beyond that now. This is my ICT Reaper inversion fair value gap. Yes, I know it's a badass name, I know. A Reaper inversion fair value gap is when you're inside of a breaker, you're going to cut through candles because we are not supply and demand, folks. I can't stress this enough. This is this is one of those lessons where you can look at folks on the internet that try to say I rebranded stuff or I call supply and demand something different or I complicate it. Folks, there is nothing like this anywhere else, okay? I wanted to create and codify a method to go in and capitalize on, number one, precision, two, take advantage of shifted sentiment and go under the radar of everybody else out there. That's what my Reaper does. It's devastating. It's absolutely devastating because you don't see it coming, but it's right there. Price run leaves a fair value gap in the lower portion of this price run. Okay, so it's the first leg of the bullish breaker. The fair value gap must be in a discount relative to that low to that high. You see it here? Between here and here. That's a discount. The discount is being measured on this basis, the low to high. Once we have that, extend that forward. If we're bullish, in this case we were, and I've 
proven it to you. I told you we were looking for higher prices. The market trades down through it, doesn't respect that as we would expect. Everybody that would see my stuff online or think they understand it or think this is a liquidity void, it's not. It's going to trade down through it, run the stops. Why? Because I want to knock those individuals out that have a trailed stop loss there. And then the market rallies on Sunday and the Monday. Takes out the high. Now, everyone that wants to use my breaker, they get punished here too. They're not going to be able to go in here and go long. And also, the traders that are using this as a bull flag, they're going to get punished. Now, I know if I was just to say all these things right here, this would have been like, oh, this is cherry picked. You're form fitting. You're doing this. You're doing that. I said it this morning before the market even got to 8 o'clock. It's 7.43 this morning, New York local time. I want to see it drop down into what? Monday's range. Here's midnight on Monday, New York local time, to Monday's high. Measure that. The best, the best fills for getting long is going to be at equilibrium or higher. Except when my Reaper exists in price action. Cut through all these candles and go right there. We see it drop down and then bang. That's the, that right there, that signature there. That's what I was looking for this morning because it was respecting all through here, all through here and go right back there. Folks, this is proof that my algorithm refers back to candlesticks, highs and lows that you would never otherwise know. Where's the support and resistance idea? With all this, you're going to go right here, right? You're going to take that high and draw it out in time. Wonderful. But I've already told you, classic support and resistance is only confirmed if it has one of my fair value gaps. And look what it has right there. Consequent encroachment of that Reaper right there. But if you want to know and you want to have all the details that I'm making available to the trading community at large, these are the things that I've codified. A Reaper is a fair value gap in a discount of the impulsive price leg of a bullish breaker. Reverse it. A bearish ICT Reaper inversion fair value gap would be a bearish breaker that would have a fair value gap in the premium side of the impulsive price leg. So all of these things are completely reversible. But the context is you have to have a bias. There has to be some kind of retail idea that would lure traders in. Well, we have here, bull flag. It drops down in to what? The previous day's range. Now look at the bodies respecting 50% of the previous day's range. See that? Remember, the wicks do the damage. That's the reaper's job. And then that little signature right there tells me it's done. It's going to go higher. I'm entering on that candle. Taking all that aside, if reapers are a little above your pay grade and a little confusing for you, that's okay. I'll talk more about it in my book. We have our standard inversion fair value gap there within a breaker, classic bullish breaker. And then here's the price leg. Between the low of that candle and the high of that candle, those are the specific price points. And my fill going long six contracts was 15,781 even below and inside the inversion fair value gap there at the candle that qualified and confirmed that my Reaper was in fact good to go, send price higher. And I took a market exit. It wasn't a stop out. This simply closed it because my attentions were going to be somewhere else and I wasn't going to be able to do anything I wanted to do managing it on my cell phone. So there's where my close was and went a little bit higher, went above the 16,000, but that's still good enough. Over 120 handles on NASDAQ. So about 14 grand plus. So not bad for a 
couple hours of uh, leisurely fishing. 